Matthijs de Ligt furiously slammed as clunky Man United star uses the gym too much. Matthijs de Ligt is facing renewed criticism following his awful start to life at Manchester United, with the defender now being told he is spending too much time in the gym. Matthijs de Ligt has been told he has been in the gym too much, with the Manchester United star being branded clunky. De Ligt arrived at Old Trafford in the summer transfer window in a £42 million deal from Bayern Munich, but the Dutchman has struggled to live up to his price tag in the opening part of the season. Having been at fault for two of Porto's goals in the Europa League last week, De Ligt was dropped for the trip to Aston Villa on Sunday. He did have to come on at half-time to replace the injured Harry Maguire, though. There were high hopes for De Ligt when he arrived from Bayern, with the 25-year-old expected to form a partnership with Lissandro Martinez. Instead, he has struggled badly, and former title winner Chris Sutton believes that is down to his body shape. Sutton told the It's All Kicking Off podcast, He's been in the gym too much. I mean, most people need to get in the gym. When he was at Ajax and he came to the fore, not only was he strong, but he was agile, he was mobile. He just looks clunky, doesn't he? Ten Hag played down the move to take De Ligt out of the starting lineup for the draw with Villa on Sunday. The United boss insisted the decision was merely down to rotation and praised De Ligt for his performance once he came on. We have loads of games. We have to rotate the team, the freshness, and I think it was a good decision today. I think the performances from Harry Maguire and Johnny Evans, they were very solid. But also, I think Matthijs De Ligt came in at halftime and was very solid, Ten Hag said. Of course, you take everything into consideration, but there were more reasons. And Johnny Evans, I didn't know if he could come to an end and I would have to sub again. So yeah, it's always about consideration. One for one for me was the best idea. This is our fourth clean sheet of this season, and that tells something about the control we have in and out of possession. We are organized very well. In many games so far, we create loads of chances. De Ligt has been facing increasing criticism for his performances, despite Ten Hag's support. Liverpool legend Jamie Carragher called out the struggling United star for his poor positioning in the defeat to Tottenham. I've noticed this with De Ligt and a lot of center backs. I don't understand why they don't fill the space and come over. The striker just behind him has got nothing to do with him. That is Martinez's job, Carragher told Sky Sports after that game. It comes from his starting position. I can talk about United's midfield running at the back four. But where's De Ligt? The right backs come up and look where De Ligt is. You've got to get over. So in every situation in the first half, De Ligt... A player they brought in for huge money is completely out of position. Matthijs de Ligt had arrived at Manchester United with high expectations, hailed as one of Europe's most promising defenders. However, after a tumultuous start to his tenure, those expectations had quickly turned into disappointment and the criticism was growing louder. As fans and pundits scrutinized his performances, one recurring theme emerged. His physicality and gym habits were becoming a point of contention. From the moment he stepped onto the pitch, it was evident that De Ligt was struggling to find his footing. His first few appearances were marred by mistakes, misplaced passes, poor positioning, and a noticeable lack of cohesion with his defensive partners. The once composed player who had shown in the Netherlands and at Ajax now looked uncertain and, at times, overwhelmed by the demands of the Premier League. Critics were quick to point out that De Ligt seemed to rely too heavily on his physical attributes, having spent what many perceived as an excessive amount of time in the gym. Some pundits suggested that while strength training was essential, it appeared to have come at the expense of his agility and finesse. Commentators described him as clunky, struggling to move fluidly during matches, and often appearing one step behind faster, more agile attackers. The narrative surrounding his fitness choices began to take shape. In interviews, former players and analysts speculated that his focus on building muscle had perhaps overshadowed the technical aspects of his game. He's clearly put in the work in the gym, one pundit remarked during a heated discussion on a popular sports show. But he looks cumbersome on the ball, 
He needs to find the balance between strength and technique. Meanwhile, social media erupted with a mixture of humor and frustration, as Manchester United's headquarters fell into a quieter rhythm during the international break. A palpable mixture of anticipation and unease hung in the air. The hustle and bustle of the training ground, usually alive with the sounds of laughter and competitive banter, gave way to a more contemplative atmosphere. With several key players off on international duty, those remaining were left to grapple with the weight of their club's precarious situation. Leandro Martinez was one of the first to depart, donning the colors of Argentina with pride. His absence was felt deeply. The passionate defender had been a linchpin in United's back line. Alongside him, a few other stars had joined their national teams, eager to represent their countries on the international stage. Yet, amidst the excitement of international fixtures, the shadow of uncertainty loomed large over Old Trafford. In stark contrast, news began to circulate about several players who had withdrawn from international duty due to injuries. Speculation ran rampant. Were these injuries legitimate, or were some players opting to dodge the pressure and scrutiny that came with representing their nation? For the club, it was a double-edged sword. While losing some players meant a reduced risk of injury during an already tumultuous season, it also left the team vulnerable, with fewer options available for the challenging weeks ahead. Eric Ten Hag watched the players leave, aware that the international break provided a crucial opportunity for reflection. With no matches scheduled until October 19th, the pressure cooker of expectations at Manchester United was momentarily paused, but the underlying tension remained. The board had scheduled meetings to discuss the future of the club and its management, a conversation that was becoming increasingly urgent. Ten Hag understood that the fate of his tenure might depend on the results when play resumed. Back at the training ground, those players who had remained felt the weight of responsibility. They knew that the coming weeks would not just be about recovering physically, but also about stepping up in a way that could help alleviate some of the pressure surrounding Ten Hag. Conversations among teammates grew more intense. They exchanged ideas about tactics and strategies, hoping to solidify their game plan for when they returned to action. One player in particular, Bruno Fernandes, took it upon himself to lead by example. As the captain, he organized informal training sessions, where players would come together to maintain their fitness and sharpen their skills. It was a crucial moment for the squad to bond and reinforce their commitment to one another. They worked on set pieces, pressed each other in small-sided games, and shared light-hearted moments that reminded them of the joy of playing football. As the international fixtures unfolded, the players watched closely from afar. The performances of their teammates became a point of both pride and concern. Would they return invigorated from their exploits, or would the demands of international football take a toll? Mount, who had recently faced criticism for his performances, showed flashes of brilliance in his appearances, leaving his United teammates hopeful that he could find that same form back in Manchester. However, not all news was positive. Reports emerged about injuries suffered by players abroad, adding to the anxiety back home. Some fans began to voice their concerns on social media, questioning the club's strategy and the direction in which they were heading. With every passing day, the scrutiny grew sharper and the pressure mounted not only on the players, but also on Ten Hag. As the clock ticked down to the resumption of Premier League action, the squad knew they had a pivotal match ahead, one that could either ignite their season or send them spiraling further into uncertainty. In the days leading up to the game, the players rallied together in their final training sessions. They worked with urgency and focus, knowing that every touch, every pass, and every shot counted. They were determined to turn the tide. When October 19th finally arrived, the atmosphere at Old Trafford was electric. The stands were filled with passionate fans, many holding banners that read, In Ten Hag We Trust, alongside ones that voiced frustration at the team's recent performances. The mix of hope and apprehension was palpable. 
Would the players rise to the occasion and deliver the performance they so desperately needed? As the match kicked off, the players displayed a renewed sense of unity. They pressed high, moved the ball quickly, and fought for every inch. Mason Mount, buoyed by his international performances, was instrumental, darting between defenders and creating chances. The crowd responded, their chants growing louder as the team began to find its rhythm. Yet the opposition was formidable, and the match ebbed and flowed. Harry Maguire confirms extended spell on sidelines after limping off at Aston Villa. Harry Maguire limped away from Aston Villa on Sunday afternoon in a protective boot after being injured late in first half of scoreless draw that added further pressure on Manchester United head coach Eric Ten Hag. Harry Maguire has confirmed that he will not play for several weeks after hobbling off at halftime in Manchester United's scoreless draw away to Aston Villa. The centre-back was recalled to the starting 11 by under-pressure head coach Eric Ten Hag, but limped off at the interval after sustaining a lower leg injury when defending a set piece. He was later seen leaving Villa Park wearing a protective boot. And Maguire has said he expected to miss a host of games with a brief statement on social media. Frustrated to pick up an injury at the weekend? Will be a few weeks on the sideline for me, but I'll come back stronger he wrote on Instagram. It remains unclear whether Ten Hag will still be in charge by the time Maguire, who was also dropped by England interim head coach Lee Carsley for this week's Nations League doubleheader against Greece and Finland, is able to return. Entering the second international break of the campaign United have taken just eight points from their first seven league games and only newly promoted Southampton have scored fewer goals. United's board is meeting in London on Tuesday, with Ten Hag's future expected to be among the topics up for discussion. Sir Jim Ratcliffe led United's power brokers into his Knightsbridge offices earlier for a meeting that had been arranged before Ten Hag's future was being called into doubt. Ten Hag signed a contract extension in the summer, having won the FA Cup but their dismal set of results has seen a host of names lined up as potential successors before a decision is even made. And after the boar draw at Villa, the under-pressure Dutchman said, We are all on board together. On one page, we know what we are working through. It's a long-term process. It's external noise. Internally, we're disappointed and we know we have to do better. Especially, we need to score more. But I don't have any idea it is different, because they would tell me. We communicate and are very transparent. United returned to action with a home game versus Brentford on October 19th, followed by a Europa League trip to Jose Mourinho's Fenerbahce. Harry Maguire has confirmed an extended spell on the sidelines after limping off during the scoreless draw against Aston Villa on Sunday afternoon. The injury, which occurred late in the first half, saw him leave the pitch in a protective boot, raising concerns about his fitness and availability for the crucial upcoming fixtures. Maguire's absence adds another layer of complexity to an already challenging situation for Manchester United and head coach Eric Ten Hag. The team has been struggling to find consistency, and the defensive unit has often been under scrutiny. Losing their captain, especially at a time when the club is facing mounting pressure, could exacerbate the challenges ahead. In his post-match comments, Maguire expressed his disappointment about the injury and the impact it may have on the team's performance. He acknowledged the need for a strong defensive presence and emphasized his commitment to recovery, vowing to work hard to return to the pitch as soon as possible. This injury comes at a particularly tumultuous time for United, as the club seeks to regain its footing amid speculation surrounding Ten Hag's future. The pressure on the manager has intensified with each passing game, and Maguire's absence may further complicate efforts to stabilize the squad. As fans and analysts await updates on Maguire's condition, the focus will also shift to how Ten Hag adapts his strategy in the face of this setback. The defensive lineup will need to be reshuffled, and other players will have to step up to fill the void left by their captain. 
This situation serves as yet another test of resilience for a team that is eager to turn its fortunes around and deliver the results that fans have been craving. Man United star Mason Mount has already shown true Thomas Tuchel colors amid Eric Ten Hag pressure. Manchester United News, as review of Thomas Tuchel from one of his big success stories, offers Ineos lots to think about. Only six players have both scored and assisted more than 19 goals under Thomas Tuchel in his managerial career to date. Given he has never had a single man get to 100 appearances during his watch, perhaps it's no surprise. The names on an output list under Tuchel are big ones regardless. Kylian Mbappe, Neymar, and Angel Di Maria have achieved the aforementioned feat. Harry Kane scored 44 goals in 45 games with 12 assists, and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang managed almost a contribution per 90 minutes as well. Henrik Mkhitaryan, Christian Pulisic, across Borussia Dortmund and Chelsea, plus Mainz's Andreas Ivanschitz, have also managed the 19 goals and 19 assists for Tuchel. Mason Mount is the only other. Across just 18 months at Stamford Bridge, Mount played 87 games for Tuchel, hitting double figures for goals and assists in the Premier League in 2021-22, setting up a Champions League final winning goal, and becoming integral for club and country. 14 months at United, and he has played 25 times in total, starting 11, scoring once, and assisting one too. It has been a serious drop-off which has seen him lose his place for England, struggle for form and fitness, whilst rarely being in the spotlight. Under Tuchel at Chelsea this could hardly have been less true. Mount played all but 13 games under Tuchel and was a creative hub for a team lacking in adventure. He was a disciplined tactical pawn utilized across the pitch, taking his output to new levels. It's no surprise that he was immediately a popular man in southwest London. I remember we had a meeting in the morning, Mount recalls of the trust day under Tuchel after Frank Lampard was sacked in January 2021. The week was a kind of whirlwind, it was crazy. It's something I've never experienced before, so you're just trying to work out what's the next step. What's happening next? How's the next day going to look? We had a meeting where he, Tuchel, put down everything that he wants us to do, how he wants us to play, how he likes to manage. He told us everything and then we went out and trained and we had a game the next day. So it was a crazy kind of turnaround, but he was so clear on what he wanted and how he would like us to play, very clear on the roles and responsibilities, that it made it very easy for us to transition. From day one, as players, we realized how he gives his game plan. It made it easy for us to go onto the pitch and do it. As a team, we are players who react off that and adapt very quickly. It made it easy and we want to play in these big games and win trophies. That has always been our goal. And since he has come in, he has pushed us and we have definitely had the opportunity to win big games and play in finals. Mason Mount's arrival at Manchester United was met with a wave of anticipation. Fans remembered his days under Thomas Tuchel at Chelsea, where he had thrived in a system that played to his strengths. However, as the season unfolded under Eric Ten Hag, it became increasingly clear that Mount's adaptation to a new environment was far from seamless. In the early matches, glimpses of his talent were evident. His ability to read the game, coupled with his work rate, provided a spark in midfield. Yet, as pressure mounted on Ten Hag, Mount's performances began to waver. The inconsistencies in results mirrored his struggle to find a rhythm, and whispers of doubt started to circulate. One notable incident highlighted the contrast between his time under Tuchel and his current situation. In a crucial match, Mount had the opportunity to influence the game significantly, but instead of taking charge, he appeared hesitant, often retreating into the shadows. It was a stark reminder of how the freedom he once enjoyed under Tuchel had been stifled in Ten Hag's more rigid system. Mount's previous success was built on a foundation of trust and tactical clarity with Tuchel. The German manager had a knack for maximizing his players' potential, allowing Mount the space to roam, create, and exploit defenses. Under Ten Hag, however, the team seemed to lack that same cohesion. 
There were moments when Mount looked lost, unsure of his role amid a backdrop of shifting formations and tactical adjustments. Former Chelsea players and analysts began to draw comparisons, suggesting that Ten Hag needed to unlock Mount's full potential by adopting a more fluid approach. The pressure mounted not just on Ten Hag, but on Mount as well. He was expected to be a transformative player, but instead, he seemed to be struggling to adapt to the new environment. As the media spotlight intensified, Mount was caught in a whirlwind of criticism. Pundits scrutinized his lack of goals and assists, questioning whether he could handle the expectations. 